Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Spring is in the air here in Brussels, Belgium, which means that my indoor plant jungle is slowly but surely waking up after a well-deserved winter rest. Now I am a little bit ashamed to admit that I haven't posted any new episodes for my unpopular philodendron series in almost 8 months. And although I'm pretty sure that all of you perfectly survived this lack of new episodes, for myself it's quite unacceptable since I have so many more unpopular philodendrons that I want to discuss and share with you. So this will be episode number 26 in my series about philodendrons that tend to fly under the plant radar. They are not hyped on social media, they don't have any fancy variegation, they are most of the time not expensive, although you probably will have to order them online from specialized webshops. Now, since unpopular does not mean rare, I decided to dedicate this episode to a philodendron that's actually quite widespread in the wild, but not so much in our living rooms. So let's start talking about the very versatile philodendron Sagittifolium. So this here is my philodendron Sagittifolium. I bought it online in November 2022 for about 25 US dollars, which I think is pretty cheap, and I got it shipped from Ecuador to Belgium without any issue. On the right you can see a picture of the plant back then, right after I repotted it and gave it a moss pole, that the plant obviously has outgrown already by now. I just had a look online and prices for this guy went up a little bit, but you can still get it online for more or less 30 US dollars. Now the name Sagittifolium comes from the Latin words Sagitta, meaning arrow, and folium, which means leaf. So basically it means arrow-shaped leaf, which is, let's face it, a perfect fit for this plant's appearance. A good thing about philodendrons, and especially this specific one, is that they are perfectly happy with medium light. As you can see, I've been keeping this guy on my plant trolley, quite far away from the window, and this medium and in wintertime almost low light situation doesn't seem to bother this philodendron at all. This philodendron is obviously a climber, and as I said in the intro already, it is quite common in the wild. It can be found in countries like Mexico, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia and also Brazil. It was discovered and described for the first time in 1849, so quite a long time ago, and it is considered the king of shapeshifters meaning that this is the philodendron with the most possible variations in leaf shapes of all philodendrons, which makes it sometimes difficult to recognize. Here you can see the top of my plant that I haven't propagated yet, and since it's happy, it's currently working on a brand new leaf. Beware that this philodendron grows its leaves in all kinds of directions and the stems of the leaves are quite long. So if you want to get this plant, know that it will take up quite a bit of space. I am growing this plant in my own aroid mix with soil, small rocks, perlite, wood chips and some worm castings for fertilizer. You can see that the top leaves are way smaller than the bottom ones, not only because they were grown in the cool Belgium climate and not in the tropical heat of Ecuador, but also because the plant outgrew its moss pole. But I still think that the leaves look awesome and I like plants with different forms and sizes of leaves anyway. So overall, this is yet another unpopular but very easy care philodendron. Perfect for underwaterers since you can let the soil dry out completely before watering. It's a quick grower, no doubt easy to propagate and it doesn't need a lot of light.
Alright, that's all for today's video. If you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and or subscribing to my channel. More unpopular philodendrons are impatiently waiting to be the star of a next episode. So for now, I thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you back soon on my channel. Bye bye.